talk me through exactly what happened to the car surrounding the time it got stolen. So keep watching the video to the end and you'll find out what happened to it. In the last video, I managed to get my stolen recovered Audi RS4 running for only £56. And I got really excited, I even forgot about getting the car to move. So I knew the engine ran, but I wasn't sure if it moved or not. Good news is, I, after that video, I managed to drive it into the workshop and I've left it in overnight because we had battery issues and I've had the battery on charge overnight. But it's not great, it needs a new battery and I'll show you why. So I left this on charge, trickle charge overnight um, and it still wasn't doing anything. So I've taken it out of the car and I've left it on its own on charge for about six hours now. But we're going to see the voltage using the voltmeter and just to watch and see how it's no good. So let's just knock it off now. <clears throat> 11 point, it's just dropping. I don't know if you can see very well, but it's 11 point. It started off at 12 and it's just dropping 11 point nine eight seven six. It's now 11 point eight nine, and it's just going to continue to drop. So I'm going to leave it another five minutes, see what that drops down to. But to give you an idea, here's our replacement AGM battery. And this should be our 12 and a half volts. And there we go, look, bang on, 12.55, and it's not dropping. So that's what it should be. And just to show you, look, I've left it probably 20 minutes, the battery. And I'll do that, I'll do that. I'll hold it, and there we go, look. After 20 minutes, it's dropped all the way down to six volts. No good. So now I know I need to fit a new battery, I can get that all fitted and not have to now worry about battery issues going forward. So I can put the boot back together. So battery all done and just look how good the Nogaro looks with the carbon black, black styling pack. It just looks epic. So now all I've got to do is fit plates. Kindly, the, um, the thieves, or well, the previous owner, whoever it was, um, kindly left me a new set of plates in the boot so I don't have to worry about a V5 logbook or anything like that. So I can put them on and we can drive straight down to Quattro Tech. And you may be asking, how am I taxing the car without a V5? Because I've had to apply for a new V5 because obviously stone recovered, they don't come with one. And you can tax the car by going to the post office and you can do it at the same time as applying for a V5. You can only tax the car um, at the post office, so you can't do it any other way, so you have to do it all in one. So you get your V62 form, fill it out, go down to the post office, say you want to apply for a new V5 and tax the car at the same time, and, that, and then you can do that and that's absolutely fine. So that is what I've done this morning. So the car is taxed, I've applied for the V5, it's ready to go. I begin the journey, um, just heading down to Quattro Tech now. You're in a really bad point of view there, to be honest, because I don't know where my screen mount is. Uh, so you're currently just using my chest piece around the back of the passenger chair. Um, it's gonna be a really boring drive because I have no radio, component protection on all over the dash. However, all my basic functions are working, such as speedo, indicators, lights, um, heat seats don't work, which isn't great. As I said, radio doesn't work, which is annoying but enough to get us down um, to Quattro Tech. So I, I expect this to be a fairly uneventful drive. I'm hoping there's nothing wrong with the car. I don't know how much fuel's in it actually. <gasps> Ooh, I haven't got a fuel gauge. Uh, right, I am gonna, I'm gonna stick some fuel in it because I have no fuel gauge, so I have no clue what I've got. So I've literally got to bend down here because it's so bright up there, the camera just, you cannot see me, I'm completely black. But I've just made it over to Cambridge Audi. I went down to Quattro Tech. I'm gonna put some B-roll footage now. Um, but yeah, it was really simple. Just plug the computer in, did an SVM. So we changed the coding in the gateway because at the minute it was suited to the other RS4 that was plugged into it, but it needs to be updated for all the control modules and options that this car has. So we did that first. And then once that was done, we were able to remove component protection for all the control modules. And 
and that just brought everything back to life. So my virtual cockpit, um, radio, heated seats, climate control, that all started working. And I plugged in my um, interior mirror as well with the headlight sensors and that just wiped all the codes completely. So really happy with that. And the car drives absolutely perfect, like it's brand new. So really happy with that. There's only one small issue now at the moment, and I'm probably going to... I don't know what to do about the light, but there's a few things missing on the dash now. So, as you can see there, look, I don't have an option for DAB radio, which is a bit odd. Um, my navigation also doesn't work. It says the license has not been purchased, and it, it's been removed from virtual cockpits. So it's not even an option on there. And also, the other thing is, my drive select doesn't work either, so it's, it's just greyed out. Um, I'll just show you here, actually. We just do that. So like everything working on the dash now, look all good. There's no fault codes at all. So if we go home and then go car, you can see there, look, Audi drive selects, it's, uh, it's all greyed out and um, it normally comes out like dynamic or comfort under P and that's got nothing there either. So I don't, I'm not 100% sure what's happened. I don't know if it's a coding issue, but that's something we've got to look into. There may be other faults as well, but that's all I've found so far so let me just pop into Audi now and get the carpet I really hope it fits in there I mean it's a whole carpet for the whole interior so I can't be in a better car can I a van um we'll, we'll find out as I said definitely the best car for the job it was really easy in the end the carpet was really manipulative and uh, it's not as rigid as I thought it was going to be so getting it in the back a little bit of fiddly but we got it in fine <sighs> luckily it fit fine I I was worried it was going to be quite uh, a rigid piece but yeah it's quite flexible and she's in the back there all folded up so back to uh back to the unit and um start stripping this interior i guess if there's anything to report on the way back i will but it drove it absolutely fine so as you were so here's our new carpet and this is the obviously the bit that was cut out on the RS4 so we've got to replace the whole thing. I don't know how bad it's going to be, it looks like we're going to have to remove the side trims which shouldn't be an issue, obviously the front seats will need to be removed. Um, I don't actually know if we have to remove much of the centre console, I'm unsure, um, probably do. Definitely the, the rear armrest and stuff because I'm going to guess that bolts there. Um, no, probably actually there. So, yeah, you can see where the rear footwell is, so just going under the seat bench. Um, so, yeah, interesting. I've done a carpet once before on a car. I think it took a long time from memory, but it was a long time ago. So, let's just crack on. Let's just move this back out of the way. And, uh, yeah, start stripping this. Into, yeah, I think if we just pull this down. Yeah, I don't know how much of that I'm going to have to remove, but we'll find out. So we start with the big things and that is the seats and they are really easy to come out. They're just four bolts on each one and make sure you tilt the seat back before you try and take it out to remove the electronics. That's the airbag, the electric seats, the heated seats, etc. And then the careful thing you need to do is just try and get it out without damaging it. Don't risk losing the photos and videos from your phone. This innovative device makes it easy to back up your smartphone. Near the car because, yeah, you can damage it quite easy. I mean, I should have put a towel down, but I didn't because I'm a risk taker, as we all know. Removing the bonnet handle was a pain in the ass, so I thought I'd do a quick clip on how to remove it. So you see that gap there, look, you need to try and find a flat bladed screwdriver, just force it in there, and it pushes this little tab back there. I don't know if you can just see it, it just pushes it up, and then you can slide the whole thing out. Now, that took me ages to try and find that, so I thought I'd just let you know. And once we've got the seats removed, we can move on to the center console. And this was quite simple, to be fair. There was only about 10 main bolts holding the whole thing on. Most of it is just clipped in, but it's just knowing whether things are held in with bolts or clipped in. So you just have to be so careful because these trims are really fragile. Some made of carbon, some made of plastic. So you just want to go. But there wasn't really anything online either. So I just have to be really careful and make sure I was pulling things out that should have been pulled out and not bolted in. Um, but it all went really well, to be fair. A lot easier than some predecessor cars. And uh, yeah, I got it out in probably about an hour. And I'm just about what I am. I am now stripped and ready to pull the carpet out. So yeah, just a quick, I know I've talked over the time lapse, but just a quick overview. It wasn't actually that bad. Center console came out not too bad. There's about one, two, six main bolts, <clears throat> a few little trims you have to pry up. Um, 
the trims along the side, this just pulls up here. This trim here where the seat belt is, this you can just pull up a little bit, enough to unfold the carpet, as you can see. Obviously same with that side and I've pulled it away. The rear seat bench, it just literally sits here. And same with this trim here, you can just pull it up a little bit and pull the trim out. Uh, the reason we have to take off this centre console out, mainly because of this bit here and this bit here where they go over the uh, transmission tunnel. So, and obviously this bit here is actually folded, it's not actually joined, look. This bit here is not joined, so that can be folded round. Um, I think actually I might have to remove this trim. That's the only bit I haven't removed on the other side as well. But there's one bolt in there, so I just need to pop those off and then the whole carpet will then just pull out. I don't think it's bolted down. Um, it's just held in position just by uh, the, the shape of it. It's just molded to everything, so there's nothing actually holding it in. And here's a selection of the parts I had to remove to get to this stage. And we've got our start-stop button here, gear stick here, um, wireless charger, the air vent that goes to the rear. Uh, there's our gear stick here in its entirety there. Uh, carbon trim, we've got that leather bit there which I didn't actually have to remove. We have our centre console here, look. Uh, gloss back black trim. I am going to polish that up and get that looking good before we refit it. Um, and also we've got our seats and the main centre console bit here as well. And as you can see, like, I didn't actually have to remove that leather trim bit uh, so I know for next time. So it should just be a simple case of just pulling the whole thing up there. Let's just unhook it from there. There you go, just pulling it up like that. So let's get it out. And there we have it, carpet all out and a really nice and clean chassis as you'd expect. I've seen enough spot welds to last me a lifetime. So yeah, there we go. And then we can see, how everyone was saying that was a water marker. So we can see that does nothing. So I'm just gonna leave it there. And uh, we can see the old carpet here. There's our new one there, look, and there is our old one with the torn corner here, so we are all good. I've just pulled off the footrest, because you can see that is that was the footrest on the new one. And also, because we're RS specific, uh, I don't know what I've done with it. Um, yeah, lost it. Great. This is our RS specific one, and this actually just pulls off. Uh, you have to pull it quite hard, but it does just pull off and uh, we can just slot that in there which is what I'm about to do. Um, I'm going to just move all the parts over to that one so that's still protected and let's get this new carpet in. And luckily the carpet's really manipulative, so it really easily went into position. And there we have it, all in, all tucked over the chassis rails where it should be, all behind this center trim here, nicely folded over the transmission tunnel. And our new bit is all pressed in in the corner there and pushed in over here. So it's all now good to go. Let the rebuild begin. So as you probably just saw from that last time lapse, it started getting dark real quick last night. So I lost um, the ability to keep filming due to light, but I cracked on and uh, finished everything off. And now we are all back in and all good. So all trims are now back on. Obviously carpet's back in. I've just got to clean the floor mats and put them back in. But, and obviously this rear bench, I've got to uh, locate as well. I haven't put that down yet, just because the few problems we've got, 
I just want to make sure it's not gateway enough to pull this back up. So um, all trims down here, all done. And the whole reason we changed it in the first place, this bit of carpet here is now all good. The thieves were kind enough to not damage this trim when removing it, and they kindly put it in the boot for me as well, along with the little um, fuse box cover here as well. That was also in the boot, so thank you. I didn't have to buy that. So yeah, all now done. So with that all done now, the only thing we've got left is the issue with the DAB, the nav not working, and the drive select not working as well. Um, I'm going to plug the computer in now because I've got to reset the airbag lights anyway because obviously I took the seats out. And I'm just going to have a look, see if there's a coding issue, see if there's anything I can change to get any of those back. If not, we're going to have to take it back to Quattro Tech and uh, see what went wrong. Because when I got there, um, the RS Dynamic, uh, that was working. Um, the nav was working as well because I saw it flash up. I'm not sure about DAB, but I'm sure it's all connected anyway. So let's give that a go first. Just a quick update there, I did plug the computer in, but as you'd expect, I've done an SVM before, so therefore none of the coding should be an issue, and there was no coding issue, so we believe it's a licensing issue because we wiped clean the gateway, so I, I think it'll be quite an easy fix. And uh, obviously just to check to make sure I haven't um, left anything undone, unplugged, make sure... Crystal, no, everything still this. works this everything in the center console is working so far we're good windscreen wipers uh -huh. right. right oh we've got a front camera i didn't realize that so as i say i know there's gonna be nothing wrong with this because i've already done a hundred miles in it and that's when um i left cambridge quattro tech to get the uh component protection removed I ended up just taking it home because I've taxed and insured it everything so I can drive it fine so I ended up just using it for that night and I think the following day and it drives as you completely would expect even a brand new car to drive steering wheel straight drives a straight line there's no bangs no knocks everything works so I know this is going to be absolutely perfect however what I can do quickly is Bang it over to manual. Sounds good though, look, ready? Woof! And that's with the valve shut. You probably can't even hear it. It is quite quiet with the valve shut. And here she is, all now cleaned up and now ready to go. Now, there is that still slight issue with the uh, DAB and the nav. But I've been speaking to a few people and we think it's just a licensing issue. I think when the gateway got coded, it wiped the licenses off. So they just need to be re-downloaded back on. Um, and to do that, I have to set the key user for an Audi, which I've done. I've set it to myself, but there's a problem with Audi servers at the moment and it can't log me in. So um, it said once it logs me in, it can then download the licenses and then they should all start working again. So um, I'm just now waiting for that to start working. Um, it's out of my control. So... Yeah, that's going to be a relatively small issue and that will be resolved. But as I said, the car now clean, it looks so good. Just looks immaculate. So I've just had the interior cleaned as well. First of all, I've never actually cleaned a car myself. I've just taken it to be cleaned. But we are all now good. Rear bench is all now back in. Oh no. Got to clean that bit off. But the rear bench is all now back in. <clears throat> Even got all these uh, little bits here. Rear boot as well. Even got me a little net. So I fitted all that, refit the net, so that is all good as well. And I think I've shown you already, but there's my new carpet, all in position, everything back in. So the car is now, I've even got me a little first aid kit. Look, the car's now 100%. Beautiful. Now at the beginning of this video I said I had some information surrounding when the RS4 got stolen and I have actually been in contact with the previous owner who has told me everything about how it got stolen and what happened. Now it's quite interesting this one because it goes back to what I've been saying in the past about cars being written off for things that aren't in its... What causes sensitive teeth? Did you know the most common causes of sensitive teeth are gum problems and...
control and aren't the car's fault, such as long waiting times for parts, uh, parts being on back order, etc. And then they just write them off due to costs, um, other influences basically, but not nothing related to the car. Luckily, in this case, uh, the car didn't get written off because there was no damage on it. Um, but the person who stole the car did actually break into the previous owner's house, took the key and took the car off the drive. So there's no key scanners involved. But they only drove it less than three miles away and the car was only stolen for around about four to five hours. Um, they parked up less than three miles away. That's when they cut the carpet trying to find a tracker. Um, and they re removed the rear bench and unplugged gateway thinking that was a tracker. Now, if you remember, the rear view mirror was um, pulled down and under the passenger seat. And that's because there was a dash cam fitted and unbeknown to them, that was actually recording their voices the whole time. So I had a pretty good idea of what was happening and uh, they didn't know that they thought Gateway was a tracker and once they unplugged it, they couldn't work out why the car wouldn't then start. And that is when they've done a runner and the car obviously just didn't move from there. So you might be wondering, well, if it's only stolen for five hours and Gateway was just unplugged, why was the car sold at Copart? And this all boils down to the carpet. Now, if you remember, when I ordered the carpet, it was on back order with no ETA. Now, to find out when a carpet or anything on back order is going to turn up, you need to order it first. And for anything on back order, you need to pay for it before you order it. And because the carpet was £900, I guess the insurance company were like, well, I don't want to pay £900 for a carpet and then realise afterwards it's not going to turn up for two to three months. So based on that, it is the reason they didn't go ahead and repair the car and they ended up selling it to me through Copar as just a stolen recovered car. But it's just the risk you take, I guess, because if it had been two months after ordering it, they would have had to have paid for a courtesy car for those two months and that bill would have racked up into the thousands. So for them, the insurance company, it just wasn't worth it. But for me, luckily, once I ordered and paid for it, it turned up in around about 10 days. So yeah, it ended up being a really interesting story with the RS4 and the best possible scenario because it was stolen, as I said, for less than a few